Hi everyone, welcome back to the Wandering Art Historian YouTube channel. I'm so glad you could join me for another video. You know I love talking to you about art. I, I love it. I just love it. Ooh, we're going to be talking about sculptures today. A closer look at famous sculptures. Now, you know, as subscribers to this YouTube channel, we do a lot of talking about paintings, but I've decided to change things up a little bit. So we're going to be looking at sculptures and some pieces of art that really might surprise you and may challenge your perceptions of art. Ooh, fascinating. Mm. Of course, in addition to the YouTube channel, don't forget to check out my blog, thewanderingarthistorian.wordpress.com. There's all kinds of cool stuff there with a new blog post every week. So check it out. Yes, yes. Okay, so this is a really good one to discuss. Now, first things first, when you look at a piece of art like this, a large scale sculpture looks like it's white marble, also looks like it's a very traditional um, subject matter, maybe even with the style of clothing of this figure, you might think, oh, maybe this is a piece of artwork from antiquity. By that we mean like ancient Greece, ancient Rome, that kind of thing. We might refer to those types of sculptures as a classical style, you know, togas and robes and historical subject matter and mythology. Okay, fine. However, this particular piece of art, um, is, is not from antiquity. It's from the year 1876. And on top of that, it's created by a woman sculptor. Ooh, yeah. Kicking things off with some really cool stuff right away. So let's learn about this artist for a little bit, and then we'll come back and talk about this sculpture, okay? Edmonia Lewis. I love Edmonia Lewis. Okay, so this is a very cool female artist, super awesome, born 1843 or 1845. We're not 100% sure on the exact date. In fact, we're not 100% sure exactly where she was born. We know she's an American artist, but we're not 100% sure. Some speculate Ohio, some people speculate New York. The records are not great. Um, Edmonia's story is very cool. Um, her father was a free African American man and her mother was a Native American and she actually spent the early years of her life with her mother's people, the Chippewa. She lived with them until she was about 12 years of age and that's very cool. She's a young woman who went to college. She attended Oberlin College at, to study art and eventually traveled to Boston for additional study. And what's really cool about Edmonia's time in Boston is that she made a living as an artist. No joke. She would make um, busts, portrait busts, and medallion portraits of famous Civil War heroes and abolitionists, and she would sell them for money. Awesome. Awesome, right? So what she does, because she has this income coming in, she decides she wants to enhance her knowledge of sculpture. So where does she go? She goes to Europe. She saves her money, she goes to Europe, and she's traveling all around looking at these beautiful sculptures from antiquity, as we mentioned, ancient Greece, ancient Rome, through the Renaissance, all in this beautiful white marble. And she's like, I, I can totally do that. And the thing is, she totally could do that. It was awesome. She is a, a, a woman of color who experienced unparalleled success as a sculptor in her own lifetime. Super awesome, okay? Now what's really cool about her method is she completed every step of the process herself. What do I mean by that? Okay, so if you look at sculpting, and in particular, white marble, a long tradition, right, of artists working in that medium. And the process hadn't changed that much from the 1870s way back to antiquity. What an artist would do traditionally would be to make a model or um, a smaller version of their 
sculpture, sometimes referred to as a maquette, okay? So they would design this model, then they would take it to the stone cutter. Stone cutter would like enlarge it using mathematics, um, kind of calculate how large they wanted it, the artist wanted it to be. Um, they would cut the stone and then they would kind of chip away at some of the sections to get the basic shape, right? And then the stone cutter would send it back to the artist and be like, here you go. And the artist would do all the fine detail, you know, carving the, bringing that piece of a white marble to life. Okay, awesome. However, Edmonia did not do that. Edmonia Lewis was an artist who knew what the odds were and that during the 1870s as a female artist of color working as a sculptor in a very traditional medium, she knew things were stacked against her. She actually completed every step of that process herself. No help, no assistance, and she did not look for critiques. She did not reach out. She wanted to be the artist from beginning to end. And I think that is pretty awesome. So then taking all of this information, let's go back to this piece of artwork. This piece of art that I showed you is titled The Death of Cleopatra. And Edmonia Lewis completed this sculpture in 1876, okay? It took her four years to create it. It's five feet tall. It weighs over two tons, okay? And as we mentioned, it kind of has this look as if it was from antiquity, right? Like it could be from ancient Greece or ancient Rome, but it's totally not. So when an artist looks back on antiquity and kind of revisits that style, you might hear it referred to as neoclassical, okay? So it's like the classical style from antiquity, new, okay? Yeah, okay, so she's working in this neoclassical style. That's awesome. What's super interesting is in the 1870s, for whatever reason, the story of Cleopatra, like, had a resurgence of popularity, like in pop culture and stuff like that. So it's cool that Edmonia was influenced by that. Like, oh, the story of Cleopatra is popular again, right? So she used that for her subject matter. But what's super interesting is she kind of changes things up a bit, okay? So art historically speaking, the death of Cleopatra was portrayed in a very specific way. Like artists would depict Cleopatra like very strong, very powerful, very beautiful at the height. And then she's about to be, you know, her, her reign is coming to an end. The Romans are on their way. She has no idea what they're going to do to her. Um, they think she's going to be humiliated, led through the streets in a triumph. She doesn't want to do that. So she decides to commit suicide. And according to legend, she does so by holding an asp or snake and allowing it to bite her. Okay, so, you know, some people don't agree with that. History thinks uh, maybe she was just poisoned, you know, but the snake makes the story more interesting, right? So traditionally, art historians noticed that artists would depict her in that moment before death, but still very much alive. Okay, what we see here is Edmonia saying, uh-uh, uh-uh, I want to depict a different part of the story. I wanted to depict the part where Cleopatra has made up her mind. It's very recent. She's still holding the snake. If you look in Cleopatra's right hand, you will see she is still holding the snake. But we are witnessing her actual death. Cleopatra's gone. She has checked out. But what's so cool about that is look at the expression on her face. Edmonia has depicted a queen, okay? She has depicted royalty whose life has come crashing down. She gave it all she had. She wasn't going to give into the Romans. She wasn't going to be humiliated. Who knows what they had in store for her? She decided to die as she lived on her own terms. That, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Mm, 
aren't you glad we're all back to talking about art? Ah, oh, this is going to be a great series. There are more videos. I hope that you will stay tuned. Don't forget to like, tell me your thoughts, share it with other people. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love our time together. My name is Adrienne Lee. You know me as the Wandering Art Historian. I'll see you next time. Bye.